Were you tempted? Far away. Were you tempted? Well, I, was, I had to take uh, a great deal of convincing not to coach the team myself, Roach, definitely. Um, but Ken and I decided that in the end that it was probably best going to someone else. Oh, it's not well, yeah, it's all politics out of crisis comes opportunity. That's right, yeah. It's not the first footy manager to go into coaching. But uh, no, no, we'll leave it to, uh, to Nathan to coordinate the messages and obviously uh, Brett Montgomery will remain uh, in charge of the, the midfield for this week in, in what's a, a really important area of the ground to get right. So let's get, get this from the beginning. When did Ken realise he had an issue? Uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, we, uh, we were aware that, um, that Ken had started to have some mild symptoms, so you know, we've been able to plan things over the last uh, what, 16 hours or so, and uh, he, he's fine, but, uh, and he'll remain um, you know, in the box, effectively, uh, via phone, so you know, he'll, he'll definitely have communications with the group, but um, yeah, yes, afternoon. Just on the whole process then, when could he return? What, what happens to decide how he returns? Yeah, so he's, he's got to spend a week in isolation, as, as anyone would, so he'll be back, uh, what, what is it, next Friday. How confident are you, are you, are you that players and coaches aren't affected by this? Yeah, do you have a level of confidence? Yeah, well, we, we've done really well to, to manage it, um, both you know, from a playing and coaching perspective. Obviously, you know, Ken's the latest person to go down, but you know, touch wood, we haven't had any issues that have gone through the, the club at, at one point in time, but we're obviously mindful of, uh, of the potential of it, um, which is why we've, we've been really diligent in regard to mask wearing, you know, social distancing, all of those things that we've had to get to know over the last couple of years. Can you expand a little bit more on that? Has have you changed anything that you've um, been doing at the club in terms of mask wearing, testing, I guess, you know, done having groups, yeah, small groups than that? No, we haven't. We, as I say, we've been diligent for the last two and a half years. So, you know, the, the reality is, is that the testing regime is in line with what the AFL do. Um, but as I say, we've, we've maintained masks you know, inside. We, we still change in all different areas of the facility. Uh, and uh, meetings wise, you know, if, if we have meetings, they're all done with the guys sitting. You would have seen video of, of the guys sitting and um, with masks and, and generally at a reasonable distance. Chris, Ken's had this moment once before when he stayed here, the game was in Hobart, Alan Richardson in charge. Is there a lesson he's indicated that is it best to have less involvement, more involvement on the phone? Has he said anything about that? No, look, we, we haven't. I mean, but as I said, he, he'll be dialled into the box. So there's, there's no doubt that he'll have um, the opportunity to have some influence. I think, you know, this, this the last time, you know, it was before my time, but I, I think he'll be more... Um, present in the box this time. He's, he's feeling fine right now, so I imagine that it'll just be us working out how it's best for him to communicate to the coaching group as a whole. Squad-wise, how many are you taking? Uh, we'll take 25 at this stage. Um, Riley Bonner will definitely play, so we'll just finalise things now. Now the training's finished, but um, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be taking you know another couple of um, travellers just to, to make sure that we're not left short um, if uh, you know, someone falls with uh, illness or injury close to the game. Riley, with or without a helmet? Uh, that, that'll be his decision. I think he's, uh, he's he trained for a little bit with, with a helmet. Um, you know, today he was out there without it. So, look, I, I imagine that he'll start without it, but um, yeah, that'll be his decision. Didn't see Mackenzie in the early stages of training. Did he get out on the track? Yeah, Mackenzie was out there, yeah. So, um, so he's part of the squad. I think, I think right now uh, it's most likely that he doesn't play, but um, you know, he's, he's back out and, and ready to, to play again, which is a good thing. So when you come up with that final 22 plus a sub, is, is a yeah, I mean that about uh, what you need or how you can change your side to be better? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's the way that we generally pick the emergencies to, to, to see what we would need at any point in time. As I say, right now, uh, the, the, conf the confirmed change is that Bonner will come in and we'll, um, we'll shuffle the squad from there. I think, it's, as I say, it's less likely that Trent plays, but... Um, uh, Trent McKenzie, that is, sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Bonner, Bonner's the inclusion. Does conditions at, in Alice Springs, does that come in, into consideration in any way? Or? Well, it comes into consideration every week, um, the conditions that we're going to going to play. But, you know, as I say, at the moment, we, you know, Riley was playing some really good footy before he got injured, so uh, he deserves to come back into the into the team. Going back to COVID scene, I guess um, we've had Brisbane last week, I think St Kilda and Bulldogs this week, I guess... Is there a concern that it's going to really impact the last you know, six weeks of the season plus finals from a yeah from a club standpoint? Yeah, I, th I think there's there's a level of concern. There's no doubt that the AFL um, have heightened their concern over the last 
24 hours or so, you know, uh, their messaging to the clubs was to, to make sure that you're, you're retouching on diligence of your, your playing and coaching group. So, as I say, we, we've done pretty well throughout the, the last you know, two and a half years, but there's no doubt that, you know, we, we make sure that we're giving a message to our players to be extra cautious, you know, over the next few weeks. And clearly, you know, we don't have any room for error uh, in, uh, in making sure that we've got our best team out there. Is that almost like a semi-lockdown when they're outside of the club, you know, do you kind of give them instructions or maybe guidelines, advice to say, you know, you don't go to crowded places or stuff like nah, that? No, I mean, look, you know, they're all adults. They, they know what they've got to do to mitigate the risk. You know, clearly we, we wouldn't want them to put themselves in situations where they're more likely to, to be at risk. But ultimately, as I say, you know, the, the group have handled themselves really well and all we're asking of them is to continue to do that. How are you seeing players come back from when they do have COVID and they come back to training and matches? How are you seeing them come back physically? Is there any, I think you said the stuff, you know, the testing, Gilly and Hart kind of testing. Is there, yeah, what kind of results are you seeing from that? No, we, we do some testing in order to make sure that their, their you know, heart rhythms are, are still um, within the, uh, the, the realms of what we would expect. But, um, you know, each individual has had a, a different sort of reaction to it. Some have been extra tired. You know, you've got to remember initially there was a two week sort of um, you know isolation period. So that's now down to, to one week and, and you know, generally speaking the the guys have been a little bit fatigued in that first little period of time but they've been all been able to, to work through it. Um, Chris we've seen Bergwijn make a pretty stellar you know debut but could it be the unlikely one to miss in this situation? Yeah I think that he's you know had a had a really good start to his career with with Bonner comes coming back in that, you know, it's going to be one of those guys at that, that back who is probably going to either miss out or, or be the sub. Um, he's, he's been fantastic. You know, his, his first two games have been at a really high level and, and he's shown that he's going to have a, a long and successful AFL career. How do you nullify Max Gorn? Well, you know, you just got to you know, do what you can, group versus group. And, and at the end of the day, um, you know, we're well aware, which is why we've left Monty there to really be focused on the... Um, the, the midfield area is, is that we're going to have to come up against a, a group of Melbourne midfielders who you know, are at the top of their game and we're going to have our work cut out you know, from a hit out perspective. You know, I'm sure that that will be some level of, of challenge but our guys have, have been really good over the last you know, period of time to, uh, to be able to mitigate the, uh, the outcomes in, in that particular area of the ground. The last time you played, they snuck him up forward and he was quite damaging when they put him there. Are you prepared that they could potentially do the same again? Yeah, well, the coaches have got to be prepared for all of those things. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, both Gorn and Jackson are outstanding players, and and you know they'll end up in different areas of the ground. I'm sure. You know, we think we're a better team than, than what we were when we played them last time, and um, you know they've they've shown over the last little bit that their form has been up and down. Um, you know, we've got a great challenge ahead of us, but I think you know as a group we're ready for it. Given that there's no Clayton and Oliver, does it make the decision for Willem Drew, um, I guess, to go to um, Petrarca a bit easier? Or? Oh no, well, Drew he has done different jobs at different points in time through the year. Um, you know, again, it's it won't just be you know Drew versus Petrarca. It'll it'll be you know a, a group versus a group who who need to work out the best way to nullify the impact that you know Melbourne have got. Drew's done a fantastic run with roles, but. Uh, yeah, we're also keen to see him continue to, to break and spread, which he's done you know, really well over the last couple of weeks as well. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. Chris, everyone's been asked, so you won't be spared. If Lance Franklin takes up free agency, would Port Adelaide entertain a conversation with him? It's hard not to think that uh, someone like that could, could help your team. Um, you know, I, I think it's most likely he's going to be staying in Sydney, though. I guess um, you probably say, you know, you're looking to win every game, but do you do kind of modelling of how many games, you know, you have to win to make finals or how many games you might, be, you know, potentially could, look, could lose and still make finals? No, look, you know, with the, with the way that we started the season to, to look at the ladder predictor at any point in time would have been really scary. So we've, we've managed, and Ken has said on numerous occasions that we've lowered our eyes and and work out on week to week. You know, we, we know that we've got a, a massive challenge ahead of us on the, on the weekend against Melbourne, but if we can get that done, that we're one win closer to potentially a, a number that will help us get into the finals. But you know, right now, it's just purely about Melbourne.